Major Percy Horace Gordon Powell Cotton was a man before his time, a pioneer and a hunter. While others went to Africa to blast large animals, he made 27 trips there, not in search of trophies, but in the name of science. He brought back hundreds of specimens, all tagged and logged, with an exact record of where each kill was made. He created the Quex Museum in Kent in 1896, creating life scenes or dioramas, bringing the strange and exotic to this part of rural England. His desire was to collect a representative of all the big game of Africa. He collected longitude, latitude, weights, measurements, the skull, the skeleton, the skin. So he wasn't actually a trophy hunter. He was a scientific collector, really, uh, and a man well ahead of his time. When Major Powell Cotton was born in 1866, you know, the origin of species hadn't been long that long published. So he was following in the footsteps of um, people like Darwin, and although not many people have heard of Powell Cotton, out of all the explorers and conservationists and big game hunters of the time, he's the only one that's left an institute like this behind. Malcolm has been the curator here for 35 years. He never met Major Powell Cotton, who died in 1940, but he knows every part of this collection. He's also a taxidermist and marvels at the Major's ingenuity and resourcefulness. He was a bit of a leader in the, of his time in preservation of large game. Uh, particularly um, whole elephants and whole giraffe, which at that point in time, very few people, if any I would have thought, would have undertaken such a huge project. Um, I mean, if you've shot a big bull elephant of like four and a half, five tonnes, and it's laying on its side, how do you skin the other side? You've got to roll over a five tonne of dead weight. Well, that's fine if you've got a big land cruiser there with a chain, like today, but in those days it would have been manpower. Um, and then getting the skin off and then walking it back to camp um, I mean, the giraffe would have been done all in one piece, as a rule. We've got photographs of the actual giraffe skins, actually on huge poles with wooden platforms underneath that were built in the bush, just to get the airflow up through. And then he double-labelled every specimen. He used a cloth label with black Indian ink, so if it got wet, it didn't run. And then his empty cartridge cases, he cut those up into sections, flattened them out, and then stamped a number on it and then tied that to the skin and the skull and the skeleton. Ray Mears would probably, would probably be left out in the cold a little bit, I think, when we meet people like this, because they really did have to think on their feet. And, um, of course, obviously, they had to take the very few drugs that they had. You know, Ed was quinine and brandy. Uh, malaria would have been rife. Uh, Blackwater fever. You know, to, to go through all of that, 27 trips, and come out the other end relatively unscathed, he also was pretty lucky as well, I think. Luck was certainly on the Major's side after a lion attacked him on an expedition to Africa in 1906. His safari suit bears the scars. Needless to say, the lion is also on display at the museum. He actually shot the lion and wounded it. He broke its jaw with the first shot. Um, he reached around for um, his uh, other rifle and um, the lion charged and uh, bore him to the ground. And his gun bearer had run off. He was lucky because he broke his jaw, it couldn't bite him. But he did receive something like 16 claw wounds to his back and his chest. Um, he was pretty lucky because he didn't end up with septicemia, blood poisoning. If you want to go hunting in Africa, it can cost an arm and a leg. It was no different at the turn of the 20th century. Uh, his longest trip was nearly three years. That was to uh, parts of British East Africa. Um, that trip at that time cost him £4,000, which was around about 1905. That equates to about £1.5 million today. That was just to run the safari. I'd love to have five minutes with him in a room to find out how he actually got all this material back when you're like 500 miles into the interior and you've shot maybe 30 or 40 specimens of animals and big game and collected ethnography. How the hell did he get it all back? It must have been, the man must have been a genius because even by today's standards it would be an enormous undertaking. So uh, he, he must have been a great organiser and a man of great logistical means. Time to leave the galleries and go behind the scenes. These days this incredible archive is being poured over by academics. The bones and sinews provide an irreplaceable reference library of DNA. Zebra, lion, hyena and bear are all catalogued in the very boxes in which they were originally stored, from Bovril to Fortnum and Mason. The wrapping paper also makes an interesting read. They're wrapped in, this is the Times, 1934. 
Back upstairs and time to look at Major Powell Cotton's rifles. The Major's favourite was a manlicker. This is a manlicker schooner. It's a 6.5mm bullet hit through um, with a telescopic sight that was an optional extra from WJ Jeffries. And we still have the original uh, sale catalogue and that particular rifle cost £22.10 in those days. <laughs> Don't think you get a new man licker for that today. We do have another man licker. There's a pair of them. But the other one hasn't got the uh, telescopic sight on it. Now, I've shot one or two of them, but I have to say, looking through that telescopic sight is looking, like looking through a dirty milk bottle. <laughs> they're, not, they're not quite like the Zeiss scopes and Bosch and Lom and Leopold scopes we have on the rifle today's rifles. Prices for big game trophies are at their highest ever, fuelled by collector interest and a more unsavoury market for Chinese traditional medicine and Yemeni dagger handles. Rhino horn is now worth more than gold. But it is the Major's passion for African game, his incredible attention to detail, which means that this collection is priceless. International studies such as the giant sable antelope project rely on data from his specimens. It's uh, a huge reference library and um, it's, um, it's getting more and more use as the years go on. Um, and it's thanks to Major Powell Cotton and his meticulous record keeping that makes this collection irreplaceable. Major Powell Cotton was a hunter, a survivor and a man of vision.